So in this video, we're going to be talking about the Persians and how uh, they get everything right that the Neo-Syrians had gotten wrong in building an empire. So the, uh, um, the Iron Age uh, has a number of migrations of Indo-Europeans, just like the Bronze Age had, and one of these is a migration of, a, of the peoples that became the Medes and the Persians that uh, came around, probably around the Caspian Sea uh, into uh, what is now uh, Iran and uh, settled across uh, the Medes to the north, um, you know, the, the chief settlement being uh, 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 later developed into the city of Ecbatana, and uh, the Persians in the south, um, they uh, focused around the uh, city of uh, Susa and later built the city of Persepolis. And uh, so these are, once again, these are Indo-Europeans, which means that they bring with them their cultural heritage of, um, of clan-based, uh, non-urban, decentralized uh, culture, uh, a, uh, a, a culture that, is, that has its roots in pastoral agriculture and therefore a tendency to uh, make use of wagons, carts, and chariots. And so uh, these, once again, are Indo-Europeans that come into the Mediterranean world and encounter earlier um, civilizations that are urban and centralized and wealthier than them. And uh, the, the, the story becomes one of the, uh, of the newcomer Indo-Europeans surpassing the uh, um, the established inhabitants of the Mediterranean world, in this case, the Semitic peoples of Mesopotamia. And so uh, the, um, what's interesting about this is that the Medes and the Persians develop in different ways. The Medes to the north uh, uh, attempt to retain their, uh, their loose uh, tribal um, social structure and, and um, their uh, their their uh, pastoral uh, agricultural base, and so they are spread out across the the northern territories uh, into uh, into tribes and clans, and um, the 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 need to increase territory that comes from a a successful pastoral culture needing increased grazing land, increased land for their tribes to spread out, means that the, the Medes uh, uh, um, undertake a, a number of attempts to uh, intrude, uh, expand westward into the, the territory of the Mesopotamians, into the territory of the, of the Assyrians and uh, the, the Babylonians. And so uh, the, the Medes have a considerable amount of trouble with this because uh, they persist in, in, uh, in, in holding on to their decentralized, scattered um, tribal organization. Um, like the Hebrews coming into uh, Canaan, the Medes uh, um, you know, tend to fight uh, separately and even in rivalry with each other engaging in, in temporary alliances with other tribes only when absolutely necessary and in uh, uh, most of the rest of the time in competition with each other for land and resources. And so uh, the Medes are divided and uh, you know, their, um, their, their means of attempting to improve their situation only serves to make them uh, weaker and more vulnerable. The, the Persians, the Indo-Europeans to the south, uh, 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 unlike the Medes, recognize the problem with this approach. And so the, uh, the, the, the Persians uh, come up with a solution, um, you know, much like the, the Hebrews, again, eventually recognizing the problem with the, their divisions and the vulnerability that creates uh, in hostile territory. Uh, the the Indo-European Persians div, uh, move toward a centralization of authority, move toward the establishment of a king of kings that binds together all the Persians for the purpose of unity in warfare. Uh, and as a result, the Persians are able to establish 
uh, first a, a great kingdom to the south under uh, their first great king Cyrus. Uh, and uh, under Cyrus and uh, then his uh, successors, the, uh, um, the, the Persians are uh, able to uh, expand uh, so successfully that they control almost all of the civilized world uh, that we have encountered so far. They spread eastward into the territory of of uh, the the Indians, uh, the the Hindus around the Indus, um, they spread northward to the Caucasus and westward all the way through the the lands of of Anatolia that had once been Hittite, uh, and even into um, the Balkans in Europe. Uh, and uh, uh, under Cyrus's successor, they even conquer the last remaining you know Bronze Age uh, uh, people, the the uh, the Egyptians. And so, um, th and, and uh, the way that they do this is, uh, you know, the the um, is is partly through military success and partly through the success of their of their of their empire itself and the 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 greatness of the the Persian king. Um, the, we meet this very early on when the 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 Persians go to conquer the Medes. Uh, the the Medes uh, stand against them, confident that they can uh, defeat uh, their you know their own you know cousins, their own fellow uh, Indo-Europeans, not realizing that um, the, uh, uh, the 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 Persians have strengthened this up themselves through central authority. The Medes are still divided, and their tribal leaders are still weak. And Cyrus is able to present himself as more powerful and more able to uh, um, uh, dispense uh, a, a better life, um, you know, better resources, a better standard of living, uh, and and uh, and a um, and a more advanced society, so that. Uh, when the Persians um, and their splendid army and their magnificent king encounter the Medes, uh, the Medes end up defecting tribe by tribe, and uh, uh, um, the, uh, the the war with the the, the Medes ends up uh, ending with a whimper rather than with a with a great uh, conquest. This is emblematic. The um, the the Persians conquer as much through uh, awe of the of the Persians, their army and their king, as through anything else, and they maintain their empire um, by uh, reinforcing the. Um, the 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 respect and honor of the the peoples that live amongst them and ensuring that the the places that they co have conquered and uh, and now rule over are better off under Persian rule. Uh, the uh, the the territory of the Persians is uh, uh, each province each territory is ruled over by a a, a an emissary a, a governor. Um, a, a, an extension of the Persians, uh, these local governors are known as satraps. And the job of the satrap is to keep the locals happy, not to oppress them, not to destroy local identity, but to ensure that the locals are, are, uh, um, are, are know that uh, the Persian Empire is a good thing for them. Uh, and so they cater to the locals, um, they ensure that the taxes are reasonable, they ensure that local customs and traditions and religions are tolerated. Um, often the satrap will have some local connection, uh, a satrap might even be a local himself or married to a local, uh, and uh, both the, the local wealthy and uh, the, the local peasantry are are kept in, in a state where there's no particular reason for them to rebel. Um, areas that are not ruled over by Persian governors are uh, ruled over by uh, uh, vassals, uh, by um, by local princes that have uh, have made a a covenant of loyalty, a a, a relationship of, of mutual obligation between the Persian king uh, and the local prince. Uh, and the, one of the ways in which this works is the the uh, the susceptibility of local governors with the, you know, this much authority is that they would seek power for themselves, that they would attempt to abuse their power by exploiting the locals. 
uh, um, for their own benefit rather than for the benefit of the, of the Persian king. Uh, but the, uh, the way that the, the Persians uh, 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 rule over their territory uh, is actually sort of threefold. On the one hand, there's a small uh, Persian military presence, um, but they don't keep a, a large standing army in, in any kind of effort to intimidate the locals. And so there isn't actually, uh, you know, a huge military presence within the Persian Empire. Um, the Persian empires tend to be, uh, um, you know, at the frontiers. And, and uh, as the frontiers become natural frontiers, like the Indus and the Caucasus and, uh, you know, the deserts of Arabia and, and Sahara, there's uh, less of a need for a, a great Persian military even then. You know, the, the, the Persian military evolves into a, a slightly more uh, a ceremonial, um, you know, uh, nobility. But the, the, the point is that um, there's a, a military presence that is, uh, um, uh, that is minor, a military, uh, you know, uh, commander that is there to ensure the, the good behavior of the satrap. And the, the satrap keeps an eye on the military governor, uh, and so they're watching each other for corruption that would be reported back home. Uh, and in this way, the, uh, the governors and the military are uh, kept in line. And there's a third, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, there's a, there's a third uh, uh, pillar of um, the Persians ensuring the, the stability of their empire, which is that... Um, you know the, uh, the the king has a series of spies in, in all the satrapies and and vassal nations that are there to uh, keep an eye on the satraps and the military governors, so that uh, you know if they're not uh, keeping an eye on each other uh, well enough, uh, and, and there's any uh, involvement in corruption, the uh, the king's eyes would report it back home anyway, and it's in the interest of the Persian king to ensure that corrupt local officials are rep are replaced, uh, so that the the locals will remain happy and not exploited, not in an, uh, uh, in a mood to rebel. One of the reasons that this works so well is that the great king becomes elevated above everyone else. Uh, the great king is not simply in one of the nobility. Uh, the great king is not, uh, you know, on a level with, uh, you know, all of the other tribal chieftains and, and local princes and everything. Um, the the great king is is what all of these territories have in common. He is elevated above them deliberately uh, as something slightly more than human, not for the purpose of oppression, not for the purpose of worship. He's not uh, raised up like a pharaoh to be worshipped like a god. He's raised up so that everyone can identify him, just as a great monumental building is there to be a visual focus of identity. In the vast Persian Empire, you can't see, you know, the, the great monumental buildings of uh, Susa or Persepolis, but you can see metaphorically this great king that is above, uh, um, you know, uh, the, the humdrum every day of ordinary society. Uh, and so the, the the great king is is removed from uh, you know ordinary uh, human mundanity. He is uh, he is um, uh, sequestered within a palace that becomes a forbidden place. Uh, um, he is uh, very difficult to see. He engages in all of these rituals and uh, in accoutrements and all of these other things. Uh, you know his dress. And uh, his, uh, you know, his, uh, um, you know, accessories and all these other things, um, the way in which he is approached and the, the people that can speak with him and not speak with him, um, you know, the throne room that he is ensconced in, all of these things serve to separate the king from ordinary humanity. Uh, and as long as the Persian Empire is benevolent, um, which, uh, which it remains throughout this entire period, um, the, the people react to this uh, not with a sense of oppression, but with a sense of awe and uh, with a sense of the, of the Persian ruler as, as, uh, as a benevolent force, um, a king of kings beyond what any ordinary ruler is capable of. 
So as I said, there's four great kings. Uh, the first of these is Cyrus. Sorry. The first of these is Cyrus. Uh, uh, Cyrus is uh, goes a long way toward establishing the uh, the precedence of 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 the great king, uh, both in terms of, of conquest and dominion. The way in which the Persians rule over their conquered territories um, is laid down by Cyrus, and and the need to prevent uprising by stopping short of repression, by ensuring that empire is positive for the people being ruled over, and that there's this exchange between local resources and the benefits of empire. Uh, Cyrus does this because he has seen, um, you know, uh, the, the 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 failures of the Assyrians. Um, the failures of the Babylonians um, in seeking to create dominance truly, purely through impersonal cultural supremacy, um, the failures of the Medes in, in not coming together uh, and not having a, a you know something to focus on, a ruler to focus on. Cyrus has, has learned the lessons of, of all the uh, empire builders that have come before him, going all the way back to Sargon. And he establishes an empire um, based on these lessons learned that is designed to uh, to function successfully. Uh, and uh, you know, with this comes a sense of of Persian majesty that is not uh, primarily destructive. Um, that that uh, through the king and uh, through you know his uh, his armies. Um, you know, this is the the function, the idea of the great king, and of the the forces at his disposal, are you know are understood to be uh, uh, protective, and to reinforce the stability and prosperity of the lands that he rules over, and so you know you can see uh, uh, at uh, you know even today if you go to Persepolis you see. The, uh, the the majesty of, of the the buildings of the of the Persians and the way in which it reflects the Persian philosophy of empire the the magnificence of their architecture uh, uh, and um, the, the 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 extent to which the you know the the, the the relationship with the territories that they rule over is, is functional and successful. Uh, it yields them a great deal of tribute in return for the protection and, and wealth and benevolence of the Persian Empire. This is not to say that there are never rebellions. Uh, it's simply to say that the Persian Empire is stronger and more stable because um, the Persian kings uh, have developed a more advanced, a more sophisticated approach to empire. Um, you know, one example of the way in which the, the Persians rule uh, in, in, in ways that uh, um, their, um, the people that they rule over can find to be beneficial is the restoration of Judah. The, um, the Jews had been exiled to Babylon uh, in the 6th century when, the, uh, the, when Cyrus uh, conquers Mesopotamia, uh, and takes over Babylon. He finds the population of Jews there. He finds that they have maintained their uh, their identity and forged themselves as a separate people to prevent assimilation. Uh, and um, and they are desirous of of a return to their homeland. And uh, and Cyrus grants this because uh, the the Jews uh, reestablished in their homeland and grateful to him. Uh, um, is 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 a much better scenario for the Persians than the Jews uh, um, uh, languishing in Babylon and potentially hostile because they they have not been set free. Uh, as a result, the, um, everybody wins in a way. Uh, Cyrus is able to establish a province in Judah that is uh, that is loyal to him. Uh, the, the, the Persian philosophy is to respect local customs and identity and religion, which means that the Jews don't feel threatened. And, um, and uh, the Jews are at the frontier of the Persian Empire, which means that their territory serves as a buffer against the, uh, uh, the Egyptians. And 
a potential uh, launching pad for the invasion of, of Egypt that takes place under his successor Cambyses. And so Cambyses is able to successfully conquer Egypt. This is uh, uh, Cambyses enslaving the Egyptians and, uh, and, uh, uh, and humiliating and killing the, uh, uh, the pharaoh of Egypt. Uh, the, uh, the, the Persians are able to extend their rule into Egypt and uh, you know, later successors are able to uh, expand the, the Persian territory all the way to natural frontiers, as I said. So Darius and Xerxes, uh, the main task that they have before them is A, to, um, to institutionalize the Persian Empire so that it will continue to function no matter who's in charge. Uh, and, and B, to deal with a new kind of threat, uh, the threat to the Northwest, which is a philosophical threat. Uh, the um, the peoples that they encounter when they uh, when they get to their northwestern frontier against the Aegean uh, are the Greeks and the Greeks believe in the freedom uh, of 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 men and women uh, the Greeks believe that no one should be subject to uh, a great king uh, the Greeks are repulsed by the Persian Empire because. Uh, they see all of the people in the Persian Empire as being enslaved. The only will, the only mind, the only decisions that matter are those of the great king himself. Everyone else is subjected to um, the, the will and desire and whim of this one man. And the Greeks find this intolerable. Uh, the, the Persians, in, in turn, are, are repulsed by the Greek idea of freedom, and more than that, they see it as a new kind of danger. Uh, if, if this idea were to spread into the Persian Empire, it would be the one thing that could corrode uh, and bring down the Persian Empire itself. And so um, the Persian Empire comes to the point where they must uh, conquer and destroy the Greeks in order to prevent this taking place. And um, the, 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 the next major episode of Greek history is the Persian invasion by Darius and then Xerxes uh, uh, in an effort to prevent um, the, the Greek idea from, uh, uh, from making its way into the, uh, the world of the Persian Empire. We'll see what happens with that later on. Um, the other thing to notice about the Persians is that they practice a, uh, the same religion as Zoroastrianism which is dualist. Um, as I said before, it involves a, uh, a divide between two equally powerful forces, uh, a, a, a god of light and, and order and a god of darkness and chaos. Uh, this is in contrast to monotheism, where there's, where there's a devil who is uh, subordinate to um, one great and powerful uh, uh, god. Zoroastrianism involves a choice, and this means that uh, the, the state can uh, mark anybody who chooses a life of chaos and crime as being uh, a heretic as well, somebody who's chosen um, a, a, the, 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 uh, a loyalty to the god of darkness, to, to Ahriman, instead of embracing the, um, the god of the Persian state, light and order, uh, Zor uh, Ahura and so the, the Persians don't attempt to impose Zoroastrianism on the peoples that they rule over, but it's useful and effective in, um, in reinforcing the power of the Persian state, especially at home. The other thing about Zoroastrianism is that um, the, uh, the, the, the rituals and liturgy involved in it are so obscure, they are protected by the priests of, of, of the Zoroastrianism, uh, and uh, you know the you know the the arcane rituals that they practice are are so opaque that uh, the the things that the uh, that the priests do in Zoroastrian becomes uh, you know you know this kind of unknown quality this mystery that uh, that accomplishes um, bizarre things. 
these priests are known as the Magi, and they are known as being both incredibly wise uh, and uh, possessed of, uh, of especially outside to outsiders, um, you know, elsewhere in the Persian Empire, possessed of, of mysterious powers. And this is where we get our word magic come from. This is also why uh, the the story of uh, of Jesus and Jesus' birth in the New Testament involves the approach of of, uh, of magi to demonstrate that uh, the world of, of magic and uh, and the world of the uh, uh, the ancient emperors is making way for uh, a new kind of of um, savior, and so uh, that's that.